Hello, Falaba and Sakala Flayatu Kematolo Osi. Welcome back to our MIT online lecturer series. Um, Stevie and I are here from the schools and community team, and we are joined by two of our colleagues, Albert and Krishan, who are here to talk about um, a few of our programs that we that we offer here at MIT regarding tertiary. Um, hand it over to Stevie. Kia ora, everybody. Welcome back to day. Oh, I can't, I can't remember what that is, but it's awesome to be back. <laughs> um, so I hope you enjoy. Um, hope you've got your cup of tea ready. And um, if you have any questions, please fire through on our live chat. Awesome. Cool. So thank you guys again for joining us. We are grateful and honoured to have you here join us through this series. Um, thank you for also putting the side of time for us to do this, um, both you, Krishan, and Albert. We're going to move straight into our, uh, our first question. Tell us a little bit about yourselves. Talofa. My name is uh, Albi Fitzamanu. Um, I am Samoan Kiwi born and raised here in Samoa, spent uh, the majority of my life in the USA and back here to New Zealand. I've been at MIT almost, uh, this is my ninth year. Yeah, and uh, yeah. And my background is, is social work and counselling. However, I do have my quals in uh, literacy and numeracy, adult literacy and numeracy and adult tertiary teaching. Kia ora. And Bula Vinaka, I'm Christian Mani, and I'm originally from Fiji, actually, and I've been in New Zealand for at least 20 years now, and working for MIT for more than 16 years. Wow. And I've worked in different uh, departments throughout MIT, and currently working for the tertiary teaching unit for the last two years. And my background is more about online learning, more towards e-learning and uh, adult education. So that's me. Awesome, what a dynamic combination. Thank you, gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Please share with us um, the different programs that you teach on. Um, please talk about the location, um, online learning opportunities, and also, um, if you can, please dabble in the entry requirements. Okay, so I'll start off with that one. So we have got different levels of qualifications in tertiary teaching unit. And the level seven qualifications are the graduate certificate in applied e-learning and the graduate certificate in activity-based learning. These are level seven qualifications for teachers who are using this to upskill themselves in their career. So they already might be in a teaching role and they wanna enhance their teaching practices by taking up this level seven, level seven qualifications. We also have got short courses and training schemes for teachers. Mm -hmm. And these are our level six, we have got the Pacifica strategies and level five, we have got the unit standards, the US 11551 and 552 and also the short course for workplace assessment which concentrates more on unit standard 4098 so we've got a range of programs available for the teachers that they can you know upskill themselves using these qualifications that are available from the tertiary teaching unit and in terms of location, we are located in the Otara campus, in the North campus, but because of our courses, most of them are online. So it could be done totally online. You don't need to physically come to campus. Uh, it's available through Canvas and it's easy to enroll and complete the whole qualification through distance. And uh, entry-wise, the main entry is you if you are already in a teaching role, Mm -hmm. or a training role as a, you know, and you want to upskill yourself, the minimum or the core requirement is being in that, you know, a teaching role that you need to, uh, you know, enable yourself to finish uh, the pay, uh, pay course assessment requirements. Right. Yeah. That's cool. Albert, do you have anything to add on to that? Oh, yeah, yes. Uh, the <laughs> other thing that we're, sorry, well, I was overcome. Uh, the other thing that we're offering next year and we're really excited about is a Pacifica training scheme. And it's centered around uh, success for Pacifica students and how to engage our Pacifica students in their learning, not only engage the Pacifica students, but also include their families and the wider community. It's a certificate in Pacifica strategies for success. It's a very simple uh, training scheme. There's three credits 
minutes long. And there are three modules, so there's one credit per, per module. So, so it's not an, an overwhelming uh, certificate. We're really excited about this. And it's open to all who want to engage all those uh, in the education field, whether they be an ECE, um, primary, secondary, tertiary, or even uh, industry training. So it would be a good basic course for anybody who wants to learn uh, for non-Pacifica and Pacifica alike how to engage their Pacifica uh, learners or their Pacifica employees. Yes, and I'll add to that in terms of delivery, we have both part-time and full-time options available, yeah. as well as we've got four intakes during the ER, basically. So we have got a February intake, a April intake, July intake, and October intake. So during the ER, you have got, you know, multiple chance to yes. start the courses. Yes, you have different options. Yeah. Um, just with um, the Pacifica program, um, Albert, yes. uh, any, anyone can enter into that program. You don't have to be Pacifica, so it's open to all, all people. Yes, uh, thanks for that question. Yes, it's designed for anyone and everyone because it's not only Pacifica they need to know how to teach Pacifica, it's for non-Pacifica, more right. geared towards non-Pacifica and how to engage Pacifica. So, And it's open across the board from those anywhere who are teaching from, again, from ECE right through to tertiary education and beyond, also offering to employers if they have a staff that they need um, uh, that would like to engage with Pacifica, their Pacifica staff uh, in, in that realm as well yeah Perfect. great yeah and that's coming through next year yes we hope to be launching that in february of 2021 awesome thank you for that um moving on to our next question um tell us a fun fact about yourself maybe we'll start off with you Krisha. fun fact um in terms of me i think i'm a chocolate fan addict to chocolates i survive on chocolates <laughs> so it's my it might it's more like unhealthy but uh, it's definitely fun for me <laughs> Steven, I can relate with that. Thank you, mm -hmm. Sha. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's how I get through my day. <laughs> yes, yes, that's so true. Uh, for me, um, I, I was I was thinking about that because I have so many fun facts about myself, and so. But the one fun fun fact that that I thought was quite unusual was that the fact that I toured with Disneyland through Asia and Europe as a musician uh, so that was uh, something that was a great experience of my life and uh, having worked with professionals uh, with the Disney Disneyland professionals wow that is so oh, cool wow. Albert I had yeah. no idea <laughs> yes performed with Donald Duck and Minnie Mouse on stage it was it was great thank you wow I have to get you to do one um some demos late uh, you know coming up and some orientations yes, contact my talent agent and we'll, we'll <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay, we will. <laughs> Thank you guys for that. I can see how unique this program is, but to you two, um, please share with us um, what's the most appealing part about your program and also what do you love about them? Um, I'll go ahead. So basically, the main thing I think appealing is the program is very realistic. So mm -hmm. it is uh, it is about teachers building their teaching capabilities. So once you uh, graduate with your teaching qualifications or whichever industry you come uh, to, you know, share or deliver. So you have your industry knowledge or subject matter experience, you know, your experience in that subject matter. But the teaching side needs to keep growing. It's a continuous improvement as, you know, as teachers with the technology advancement and things like that. The teachers needs to, you know, inherit or, you know, grow and uh, uh, advance in their career. So our programs actually allow them to look at what's available or what they haven't tried out before in their classrooms, in their teaching practices. So it's all about, you know, uh, realistic approaches, teaching approaches that teachers can try out in their own teaching and learning experience. Good, and I think the most appealing thing about our Pacifica training schemes is that it's not only relevant and contextual to South Auckland, but New Zealand as a whole. And it's appealing because uh, we've had a lot of questions from non-Pacifica on how to engage and how to best get our, our Pacifica uh, learners to engage in, into their learnings and how to get the families and communities involved. So I think there's going to be some great discussions and the great dialogue that can come out of it that can help them in their teaching practice and enhance their pedagogy. Mm, that's cool. Thank you for that. Um, what is our next question? 
um, if there was, I guess, oh, well, any teachers that were watching careers advisors, um, ECEs all the way up to secondary school teachers, um, what would you suggest be the types of qualities or traits they bring with them onto your MIT program? Uh, in terms of uh, students, like I would say that they come with an open mind to explore new things. So basically they might have their own uh, ideas or styles of teaching. And then now when they join our courses, we will like, you know, um, uh, open up new ideas for them. So if they come with an open mind and try out new ways of delivering or teaching, mm -hmm. that will be really handy for them to grow in this space with the programs that we are offering. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with what um, Christian is saying. The same on the same vein, there's a saying that goes: "When you're green, you grow, and when you're ripe, you rot." Uh, it's that attitude of always learning, mm. ongoing. And no matter how much you know, there's always more to know. And 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 no matter you could be 100 years old, but you'll still be learning. And it's that ongoing, lifelong learning thing that that is is something that we like them to come with an open mind, attitude of positivity, and uh, an attitude of partnership. Where uh, like the ACO, um reciprocal learning thing where they come and we share ideas and we share learning and we go on this journey together uh, and it's all about staying green uh, so that we don't ripe and we don't rot. Mm. Thank you for that. I, I do believe in that philosophy too that um, you need to continue to, to learn otherwise you don't evolve in your mind uh, you know it doesn't keep yeah it, there's just something about keeping um, or growing and learning so yeah thank you for, for that. Yeah. Um, just in terms of some of the projects that students um, do uh, in your programs, please share with us one of the um, most exciting ones that they do. In terms of the grad sets, the level seven paper, actually, we have got the uh, level seven paper has been split into some core uh, learning groups where they cover the components of the design, the development, delivery, and the evaluation of the courses. So basically, learners are expected to do some major projects throughout uh, the courses that they take up. And uh, these are all very practical. They have to do it in their own environment that they're teaching in so mm. they follow through the course but they pick up a project in their own teaching environment and they could be redesigning some courses that they're teaching if they're teaching face to face they could design how they can put that particular course totally online or modules of it online and their special topic projects they, they pick up to do a whole component a whole course and move it into a blended delivery so there's lots of projects happening and it's uh, designed in a flexible way that teachers could do what they need to do in their own space and it also achieves the assessment requirement for our courses plus the outcome also benefits them in their own teaching practices in their own jobs so it's very realistic and uh, it meets you know two requirements they also end up with a product that they can use and also it becomes a part of the assessments for the courses that they're doing that they're doing interesting yeah, and in the Pacific training schemes, there's no specific project, but there will be a lot of robust uh, discussion and dialogue uh, that will be facilitated in our face-to-face -face and online uh, platforms as well. So it's all about um, encouraging and motivating our Pacifica learners to be lifelong learners and to embrace uh, education because some of them may have had really bad experiences uh, in their education journeys. Yeah. That's cool. Thank you for that. Um, Without saying any names, um, please talk about one of your, um, I guess, success stories that have come from your programs. Success stories. So basically for the grad set papers, the activity-based learning and the graduate set in uh, applied e-learning. For this one, these are teachers, I wouldn't say names, but uh, especially for MIT teachers, I would say those who have completed. It's more moving towards uh, uh, trying to deliver, like currently you can see how the buildings are changing to open plan, open learning spaces. And we are changing from, you know, uh, four walls, closed classrooms 
classroom where you are just doing face-to-face -face lecturing to a more uh, flipped learning environments where they have to be in open spaces. So the buildings are changing, the teaching styles are changing, and our courses are trying to help them. So you could see people who have finished our qualifications, our own teachers are actually uh, benefiting on you know how they are delivering currently in new learning spaces, trying to cater with new, new technology and so on. So there are lots of success stories within our own institute with teachers who have upskilled themselves with the programs that we offer at Tejri Teaching Unit. Awesome. Yeah, as yet, uh, because we haven't delivered our Pacifica training scheme, <laughs> hopefully next year I can share with you some great <laughs> success stories. And I'm sure there'll be plenty that will come through. Thank you for that. Thank you. Okay, so fun fact time. Please describe your few weeks in lockdown using one word. <laughs> you go ahead, Albert. Yeah, um, you go ahead. Is, is suicidal? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, enlightened. I'm so much more enlightened what? about who I am because of this wonderful experience that I've been through, this life-changing experience. I'm more enlightened. Okay. And for me, I think it's more about the family or the final time that I had that mm. usually you don't get to spend with your family. So it was an awesome time to be with your family. Yeah. Are there any new hobbies or activities that you guys have learnt um, during the lockdown? Oh, I can cook like I've never cooked before. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I found some new hidden talents that I never thought I had. <laughs> Huh? That's good, Albert. I've taken up, uh, you know, now I think I'll carry on or continue with that, uh, going for walks around the block, which yeah. I usually didn't do. But now it seems like, you know, it's something to carry on doing even after lockdown. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, so we're well, heading into our last question now. Um, why would someone or anyone that's, um, I guess, wanting to upskill, why would they choose tertiary unit programs here at MIT? Why would they choose to come to MIT? I think because we are here to support them in their learning journey and uh, provide a great learning experience. And we have got a strong cultural uh, uh, pro, you know, programs that cater around the dynamic range of learners that come through MIT. And MIT is focused on getting students to great jobs. So our students are mostly teachers who are already in good jobs, but it's trying to help them to become you know, good teachers. Uh, and you know, it's a continuous improvement cycle as teachers. So basically we are all here about you know, providing success to our students. Yeah, I mean, why choose MIT? Why choose MIT? Why not? I mean, that's what I say. Because you have Christian and I, who are just amazing tutors and lecturers. <laughs> and and no, but, but we have a passion. We're very passionate about what we do, and we we actually do love what we do, and we're very supportive. And uh, we'll go to the end to ensure that our our learners and and our kaimahi are supported throughout their journey here. And that goes for the whole institution as well. You're very well supported here at MIT. And, and it's a rich environment of cultural diversity, you know, ethnic diversity, gender diversity, and what what more richer, most vibrant place could you be than MIT? Mm. Mm. That's beautiful. Thank you, Albert. Um, so I think that's um, that's the end of our interview today. Uh, just on behalf of the um, Schools and Community Liaison Team, we'd just like to thank you for sharing with us um, a bit about your programs. Um, so to our viewers, if you'd like to know uh, more about these programs, please go on to our website, www.manuko.ac.nz, or otherwise, please drop us an email uh, to both Gina and I um, on experience at manuko.ac.nz. Also, um, if you want to access our other um, interviews, please go onto our Facebook page, like it, and then go through the events um, discussion area and then you'll find the other interviews there. So thank you for joining us, gentlemen, and we'll see you again. Thank Bye -bye. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Bye. MIT, where the best makers are made.